Hello everyone, and yes, it is two more days until the start of the candidates tournament, or rather until the opening ceremony, and three more days until the actual first round, and you guys have requested that, um, well, maybe we should show a game uh, between the candidates, or maybe even better, we should show a game where the candidates have faced the world champion Magnus Carlsen. So this is uh, the first game in the series before the start of the candidates. Uh, it is Magnus Carlsen with the white pieces against Hikaru Nakamura, uh, the legendary game from the 2016 Bilbao Masters. It was a double round robin and this is a game from round one uh, so uh, the the, the uh, tournament definitely starts with a bang uh, as this is uh, Hikaru's first uh, and the only win in classical chess against Magnus Carlsen uh, it is their 56th game altogether across all time formats and uh, well it's obviously a very very special one and sorry about saying that uh, in the previous video okay on one part of the video I said that the candidates was uh, being played in uh, Barcelona in the other one I I said it was played in Madrid it's actually played in Madrid I have no idea why I said Barcelona uh, you know, so sometimes my brain does we weird stuff, uh, as I mention uh, quite often. Uh, but yeah, getting back to this game, uh, it is Magnus with the white pieces, and he opens with pawn to e4, and he Carl plays uh, pawn to c5, the Sicilian defense. And this is the, like I said, this is the 56th game that they played all together, and this is the fifth time he Carl employs the Sicilian defense against Magnus. And Magnus doesn't go for the standard knight f3; he goes for knight to e2, the so-called Keres variation or sometimes the chameleon variation. Uh, the uh, position can transpose into a normal Sicilian if white plays d4 but also white doesn't have to play this. So here we have d6 by Hikaru and now not d4 but rather knight b to c3. Now we're gonna have g3 bishop to g2 and of course Magnus will and Keto the light square bishop and castle king side. So pawn to a6 and now g3. We have g6 bishop to g2 bishop to g7 and now Magnus strikes in the center with pawn to d4. We have c captures on d4, knight captures on d4, and knight to f6 now. Uh, both players castle, so castles, castles, and now we have pawn to b3. Nowadays, uh, this is still being played, uh, even though, uh, but the engines say that you have to play h3 here, so h3 is the most popular move, uh, but in 2016, uh, pawn to b3, or maybe it was even most popular uh, in 2016 to go h3, maybe b3 sort of a surprise for Hikaru, it's hard to say. So, knight to c6, we have knight captures on c6, b captures on c6, and now bishop to b2. So, it was scary opening up the diagonal like this, but uh, everything work, works perfectly fine. And now queen to a5, sort of putting a lot of pressure on this knight on c3, but it's very hard to take advantage of this. Uh, just to give you a silly idea, let's say you play rook to e1, uh, it seems like uh, Hikaru can just win a pawn here, knight captures on e4 and you're up a pawn, because if knight captures then we just capture the bishop uh, and we're just threatening to pick up a piece here. But you would be very very wrong to do this, because after rook captures on e4 and bishop captures on c3, uh, what is that one move that always wins the game for white most of the time? Uh, it is of course pawn to b4. Now you're threatening to pick up the queen, the bishop, the only way to prevent this is bishop captures on b4 and now queen d4 threatening checkmate and and winning the piece and of course black would resign here so uh, but okay uh, nothing like this happens in the game it's just uh, you know for for uh, some uh, extra fun knight to a4 and now uh, if the knight moves we can easily trade the bishops here and the bishop to g4 attacking Carlson's queen queen to e1 Magnus offers a queen trade and now queen to h5 Hikaru declines because why would you trade and allow Magnus to simply uh, develop his rooks for free so uh, queen to h5 and then now we have pawn to f3 and this pawn to f3 I believe is the start of uh of uh, white's downfall because even though it's a it's a great move to play it is it is much safer to just go captures and captures and you know just uh, take the game from here uh, we trade the queens and that's it uh, but okay uh, we have f3 challenging the bishop now hikaru plays bishop to h3 and now pawn to g4 now it seems like uh uh, it could get very ugly because if queen h6 bishop to c1 uh, but this is exactly what Hikaru does queen h6 and now even if bishop c1 just g5 and uh, it looks weird but it works for black there's nothing wrong with this so instead Magnus first plays bishop a to d uh, rook to d1 and now pawn to g5 we have bishop to c1 but it's hard to take advantage of this so Hikaru just plays bishop captures king captures and queen to g6 now getting the queen away from this diagonal 
diagonal and now even uh, considering uh, just uh, busting open the position with h5. So Magnus does this instead. He plays h4. But before we check out what actually happened in the game, uh, let's see uh, what happens if knight to b6. Because this is the um, uh, real way to play this position. But it's such a weird move to play. Uh, for example, if rook to, uh, rook 8 to d8 or anywhere else, uh, we remaneuver the knight to c4. And now after, let's say, h5, we play h3. That's how you want to play this. And now... Uh, you will have uh, this uh, maneuver of knight to e3 to f5, which is just a beautiful square for the knight. The only way for black to prevent this is to play e6. But if you play e6 uh, to take away the f5 square from the knight, then you weaken the d6 square. So that's how white keeps the edge uh, in this uh, position. But okay, Magnus played h4 right away. Uh, G captures an h4, queen captures an h4, and now Hikaru just uh, breaks free in the center with pawn to d5. Uh, and now Magnus uh, has to decide, does he play e5 or does he play something else? Because if you play e5, then you allow queen captures on c2 with check. But this is, again, the absolute best way to play this. For example, e5, knight to d7 uh, attack the, uh, attacks the e5 pawn. We're going to play f4, and we have to allow queen captures on c2 with check. But after rook d2, uh, the queen will move let's say queen e4 checking to g1 the game continues uh, and uh, it, it's a fine position for both white and black but it's still the white king is um, uh, completely wide open uh, white does have the, the the incredible pressure here with the pawns but still uh, it's uh, very, very difficult to, to actually play this. Uh, but okay, after d5, Magnus plays g5 instead. He kicks away the knight this way, but Hikaru doesn't have to move the knight. So this is um, a, sort of a, a bit of an inferior move by Magnus. So here, d captures an e4, just grabbing the pawn, as of course uh, the, the g pawn cannot move. We have f4, now threatening f5, uh, but uh, Hikaru just plays e6. And there's uh, no good way to, to play this with white. Magnus now plays c4. Hikaru brings the rook to the open d file. Rook f to d8. And now we have rook d to e1. Uh, again, we have to uh, consider this knight to b6 move, but uh, nothing um, uh, great is happening here because black can just trade, for example, captures, captures, and play e3. Now with the threat of queen to c2 check, that's the problem. And now we would have something like f5, queen captures, now we can pick up the knight. Still queen to c2 with check, bishop d2, we're going to capture the rook, capture the pawn. Now queen e2 check, bishop to f2, and finally rook to d8, getting the rook um, uh, out of there and uh, preparing rook to d2 or maybe rook to d3 let's say f captures and g7 rook d3 and yes it's a it's a bishop and knight against the rook but look at that white king there white is not uh, going to have any chances here so instead after rook f to d8 we have rook d to e1 uh, and now Hikaru starts uh, remaneuvering the knight to f5. So he starts with knight to e8. Now knight to d6 to f5 will come. And, uh, well, it's very, very unpleasant when you have uh, king on g2 without any pawns to defend the king and the knight um, is uh, approaching. So knight to c5. This is an excellent square for Carlsen's knight as well as there is no b pawn or d pawn to kick it away from there. Knight to d6 and now we have queen back to f2. Uh, as the knight is coming to f5, you do not want your queen here, so queen to f2. Uh, pawn to f5 by Hikaru instead of knight to f5, because if you go knight to f5 now, uh, then the e4 pawn hangs, so you can't do this right away. So instead, just pawn to f5, and the knight will have to find a different uh, outpost, but now black's position is just, uh, is just great. So here we have uh, bishop to b2. Uh, getting the, the, the bishop to this uh, diagonal to counter Hikaru's uh, strong dark square bishop, but here just knight to f7. Uh, we have bishop captures on g7, queen ca uh, king captures, the queen has to keep an eye on the e6 pawn, and now we have queen to g3. So now rook to d6. You could also play rook to d to check trade off a pair of rooks and then bring the other rook into the game, but Hikaru has a different plan. Rook to d6, he wants to double rooks on the d file. Rook to d1, we have rook a to d8, and now Magnus trades once. We have captures, captures, and queen to c3 with check. King g8, now comes rook to f2. Uh, taking care of the second rank, but now queen to h5. This is how Hikaru infiltrates. You could also start with e5 right away, but um, uh, th there's no need to play fancy moves as the position is just much better for black. 
queen to h5 and now we have queen to h3 offering a queen trade but now queen to d1 and now uh, at some point uh, this e5 move will come where we're gonna uh, win the e5 square for our knight and the position will slowly but surely become uh, un 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 unbearable for white we have queen back to e3 now comes pawn to e5 queen back to g3 now he Karl plays rook to g6 uh, still keeping an eye on the sixth rank but um, uh, how are how are you defending all of this so king h2 uh, Magnus uh, gets the king to a bit of a safer square. Pawn captures on f4, queen captures, and now queen to h5 with check. King g1, and now Hikaru repeats once. Uh, well, probably to reach time control as this is move 39, but also maybe to just give Magnus the opportunity to make a mistake because he can always just repeat position and then choose something else. So queen to d1 check, king h2, and now he repeats. Because if you play something else other than king to h2, uh, then you uh, you're going to run uh, in, in, in some trouble. For example, if you if you allow some like queen to d4, uh, putting pressure on the knight and so on. So okay, queen to h5 with check again. We have king to g1 and now just knight captures on e5, opening up uh, the g file. And here uh, Magnus finds a way to keep the knight at bay. So queen to b8 check, king g7, queen to e5 with check, king to h6, and now queen f4, not allowing the knight to move. Uh, but um, it, it is simply not enough. Queen to d1 with check, king h2, now queen to d4, attacking the knight, and there is no way to... Uh, to defend here. Uh, th there is one tricky uh, move, uh, for example, queen h4 check, king g7, and now queen captures on g5, saying that if the queen is captured, we have this check, winning back the queen. The problem is, black, of course, is not forced to capture the queen. Black can just pick up your rook that's hanging on f2, and after the king moves, we just pick up the queen, and now, of course, white resigns. So, hopefully, uh, you were not uh, considering that. Uh, so, here, b4, uh, why not? The, that move has never let us down. Uh, king to g7. Now we have to unpin the knight and uh, get our king to safety. The safety will be on h8 and we will block checks with rook to g8. So queen c7 check. King to h8. Queen to c8 check. King rook to g8. And now queen captures on f5. Uh, but now uh, the game is over. It's a forced mate in 6. Uh, you can start with knight to f3 or queen to d6. Both moves will lead to the same thing. Uh, knight to f3 with check. King king h3 and now of course queen to d6 this is the quickest way to win the game you can play any other move basically but queen to d6 is just instant resign for magnus so it was on this move uh, in this position on move 50 that magnus calls and resigned the game and hikaru uh, gets his first victory against uh, magnus carlson in classical chess first and only ever uh, and he starts the tournament with a win as this is the um, uh, the, the first round so an incredible way to start the tournament here you resign because there's no uh, defense this is checkmate and this will be checkmate so whatever you do uh, th there's just no way to defend both the rook is completely cutting off the king from the g file uh, the knight completely uh, covering h4 and h2 so any check will be uh, game over so uh, th th there is no way to play this it is um uh, that's just game. Even even if you try giving up some material, we still just play queen h6 check, and that's it. You have to block with the queen. This is checkmate. So th th there's nothing you can even try here. Uh, so interestingly, uh, even though Hikaru got his win against Magnus in classical in round one, uh, so he definitely started the tournament on a high note. Uh, it was Magnus Carlsen who won the tournament because this was one of those tournaments where you get uh, three points for a win. That's how they played it in Bilbao in 2016. And as you can see, see pretty much everyone uh, just drew their games. Anish Giri 0 wins uh, 7 draws, uh, Karyakin 0 wins 9 draws, Wei Yi 1 win 8 draws, Wesley So 1 win 8 draws, Hikaru 1 win, this one against Magnus and 9 draws, but Magnus 4 wins, uh, 1 loss, that one to Hikaru that we've just shown, and only 5 draws, so Magnus wins this uh, uh, by a 5 point mar margin, uh, Hikaru clinching uh, the 3rd place, then we have Wesley and Wei Yi with 11, Sergei Karyakin with 9, and Anish with seven points so that that is the story of how magnus defeated uh of how he covered defeated magnus in classical in 2016 in bilbao uh it was a pretty wild game uh many many uh you know opportunities missed by both sides uh, but um, uh, once that uh once magnus's king uh, just uh, was was completely in the open and even though you could actually play this position maybe uh, to a draw, it's just incredibly difficult to do so with um, uh, such an open king. 
Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Nowadays, maybe people feel more comfortable playing with an open king as the engines really showed us the way. They say that it's perfectly fine. You have nothing to worry about. You just have to play the strongest move all the time and you're going to be completely fine. Uh, but maybe in 2016, it was a, a bit too too much to ask. Uh, so we'll see if uh, Hikaru will bring his absolute best classical stuff in the candidates tournament. Uh, you guys are also welcome to suggest other games using hashtag suggestion. Uh, so, uh, you know, we, we can cover some other games before the start of the candidates uh, so yeah uh, that's the game I uh, hope you guys um, uh, enjoyed this one I really enjoyed covering it uh, I would like to thank Martin Georg Paparik uh, Gaurav Mishra Michael Kalber Nagarjuna Ponugoti and Narendra Yadala for a contribution to my channel thank you a lot I really appreciate it as usual you can check two of my previous videos here thank you all for watching and I will see you soon continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions such as this one and uh, covering the uh, games of the candidates before the action start of the candidates on uh, June 17th. Uh, thank you all, I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.